Well, welcome. You're welcome back. We're so glad to know that you're still there and watching us. And now we're going to talk something that's related to food. Uh, I'm a foodie, and I, <laughs> I like food, and I like um, agriculture. Uh, so I'm so interested in this segment of the show today. Uh, unfortunately, we'll be rushing a lot of things because we are pressed for time. We're being joined by someone who is really revolutionary when it comes to farming, and he calls himself African Farmer. I know he has another name, but it's African Farmer that we know him. <laughs> by uh, Mr. Mogaji. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you for having me. Okay. Uh, well, um, this, this fear that there's going to be a lot of hunger, especially from next year, maybe flooding, maybe a lot of other factors that are responsible for that, and food security becomes uh, an issue when we're discussing uh, our livelihood and every other thing around it. So uh, how have you navigated that field of farming, and what do you do that gives you the impression that if it is followed the way you do it, we might have more food than we are crying now? So first and first is to say that Nigeria is not food insecure. Really? Nigeria is actually food secure. Are they it food is... secure or they can be food secure? No. Nigeria is food secure. All right, let's It's the you. governments across all levels and the citizens that are not food secure. Okay. <laughs> You'll have to explain that to us. So, so basically, Nigeria has everything we need. Human resource first. Mm. The lands, the mineral resources, the, the natural resources, and the technology. Everything Nigeria needs is available. Mm. However, it's the governments, especially local government and state, not the federal, especially, and the private sector, the citizens, that have not embraced the opportunities available. Now, so you find private sector and the citizens basically uh, blaming government. And you find government saying, private sector, take the lead, we'll follow you. Ours is policy. So everybody is waiting on each other. And, and so bottom line is that we are where we are, not because we're not producing enough. We are where we are because we're not managing enough. And, and that's the real truth. This year, tomatoes still got wasted in spite of the fact that we can say about 20-30% of farmers have not been able to go to the farms in the north. Yet, tomato is still wasting this year. Yam is still wasting this year. Pineapple is about to come, it's going to be wasting. Uh, planting is coming out, it's going to be wasting. So, bottom line is, Nigeria as an entity is producing. Mm. It is we that we're not managing properly. And, and even right now, when we're talking about the floods, we're talking about the negatives. We're not preparing for the opportunities. You know, we're still talking about the floods. Instead of saying, okay, um, this flood is going to make the rains, uh, the, the, the water is not going to recede by October, end of October. It's going to take till end of November, which means that pepper, uh, vegetables that will be expensive normally June, July, would be expensive April next year. What are we going to do? No strategy is coming out from any quarters. From presidency, from the Ministry of Agriculture, from the humanitarian department, nobody is talking about how to fix it. So what you will find out again is come March, February, March 2023, tomatoes will be wasting again to a tune of 30-40% of what will be produced from November. And this is almost a 25 years trajectory and the ministers of agriculture have not been able to fix it. The presidency have not been able to fix it. Nobody is saying... In 2023, tomatoes will no longer waste. Can I, can I come in there? Please. And I, I find that very interesting. Um, now, these produce are going to waste mm -hmm. because, like you said, over a 25-year trajectory, we haven't been able to fix it. Yeah. But for grains, for example, and in the north, we have, we have silos built, if mm -hmm. I'm correct, yes. to properly store grains. Mm -hmm. Why haven't we been able to provide the infrastructure to properly store the perishable items. Okay, so even the silos we have for grains, I stand to be corrected. Maybe something changed last week. Uh, most of the silos are empty, most across the country. So even if we produce to, to store into the silos, we will be fairly food secure. So if it does not rain for three months in this country, Nigeria will go begging for food. During COVID, we had to take a loan, I think about 5,000 metric tons from ECOWAS storage. We took a loan and our silos are empty and CBN, you know, 
um, is funding, you know, agriculture. So with the perishables, we've not paid attention because it requires quite a lot of infrastructure. They need power, regular power supply, mm -hmm. which we should be looking at um, solar, wind, because most of it is in the north. But we're not focusing on that. Even the one that we have the comparative advantage, we're not leveraging. Even for the grains, when government was trying to concession those silos out, most of the, uh, the associations, the poultry farmers association, the all farmers association, all the big associations were sleeping. Why? Because they didn't see what they're doing as responsible for protecting their members, they focus on government, government, government. While if you go to like Colorado, California, India, it is the associations that build silos mm -hmm. to be able to take up this, um, the Excess. excesses yeah. and sell back to the farmers. So yeah. the associations are sleeping and have very cushion pillows. Okay, um, I think this conversation, even though we said that it was going to end at 12, has to continue after the news. So <laughs> let's just take a short break and take the news. And when we return, we continue uh, with this conversation with the African farmer. It's getting more and more interesting. And we can't just stop it here. So let's take this break now. We'll be back in a moment. Okay, well, welcome back. Uh, we're still here with the African farmer and he was saying so many interesting things that we know if we begin to take them one after the other, we might not finish. Uh, but let me just begin or continue with this. Lagos is a state of aquatic splendor. That's what they always say. Uh, what advantages can we have from a state being an aquatic state? How much of agriculture can be done in the state? A lot. I think we underestimate the potentials in Lagos State. We, I don't know where we got the data from that Lagos doesn't have land. Well, when you compare it with other states, you can say Lagos doesn't have land. But when you, when you compare it to the productivity of what it can do, then you know Lagos has land. Yeah. Lagos can feed Lagosians when it comes to vegetables. Lagos should be a major exporter of vegetables even vegetables across West Africa and to Europe. And also, when it comes to the fish, you know, Lagos should lead. Um, well, the interesting thing in the last few years is the Commissioner of Agriculture in Lagos, you know, has actually upped the game uh, in respect of vegetables and uh, fish production. So you have more fish farming happening um, around the waterways, and we're expecting, you know, an explosion, you know, something like, a 300 times, you know, uh, expansion because all the water waves, even on Third Mainland Bridge, you just see just pure all water all the way. But you can do a lot of cage farming. Mm -hmm. You know, you can rear crabs. There's so much that can be done that, you know, we're not doing enough. So why are we not doing? I would say private sector. There was a time when we did not have a government that is responsive. <clears throat> To private sector or open to private sector. In the last four years now, we've, especially in Lagos, we've had a, a, a government, especially the Ministry of Agriculture, open to agriculture with that open arms, but we're not having the private sector embrace it. It's always, it's slow. Agric is slow. But guess what now, um, irrespective of how slow it is, everybody is facing the challenge. Mm -hmm. So there's no big organization, the FMCGs now. If they have food cheaper for their, for their staffs, life will be better. So everybody is grumbling now because the major players are not coming into it. You know, everybody's talking about dollar. They can't access dollar to import their produce. Yet, they can rear uh, fish here, crab here, sell in here, you know, get more Naira uh, or get exports to get dollar. But it's just talk, 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 talk. So we, we keep blaming government. I have said enough of blaming government. Government has opened across the state, especially Southwest. Southwest has really opened up, but the private sector has not embraced. They're still working with old syllabus. Now, you said uh, we are apparently just trying to rely on government alone, and there's a need to bring the private sector. And I was just thinking of young people as well. Mm -hmm. Um, before you joined us, we were talking about uh, the energy and the vibrancy of the young population, dynamism and all that. And um, I was just wondering, how do we interest our young people in farming? Mm. 
And what are the things, okay, now people, like Yamgul said at the top of the program, they feel it's a very dirty kind of uh, mm -hmm. occupation. They want to be white-collared workers and things. But how can we get them to take farming seriously? And what components, what aspects of farming can young people really do? First and first, because I deal with a lot of youths. When I say a lot, I mean a lot. Almost all the business schools that offer agriculture, you know, I contribute. I volunteer there because they don't pay. <laughs> yeah, I volunteer, you know, to impact youths. Uh, and first and first, as the youth say, there's no money to start. As we sit here now, there is 22 billion naira locked in the agricultural sector with two financial institutions for two years. 22 billion naira. And if they don't take it, it's likely to end up in another West African country. So one, money is not the issue. And it's just one donor that made that funding available. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, we need role models. We need to show them people who have gone through the ropes. We need to tell more stories of people who have made mistakes in the process of trying to achieve success and show them what ought to have happened. Uh, one crucial thing is we allow our youth to recycle our mistakes in Nigeria. Hmm. You don't have books. You don't have people sharing their pitfalls. So the youth go, they go in, fall into the pitfall, share the story, everybody runs away. But mentoring is very crucial. Um, incubation or internship. There is no high flyer, as far as this con country is concerned, in the agri sector that has not gone through one form of internship or the other. Mm -hmm. You must serve someone. That's how the process is. And also, you must learn to focus. Take, for instance, let me pick corn. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of corn. I've been growing corn for 27 years, in and out of the years. So corn, there are like four major types of corn in the country. There's the vitamin A corn, which is um, high in vitamin A nutrient, good for the skin, good for the high, you can specialize on that. There is a quality protein maize that is high in protein that when you feed your livestock at a certain stage, it allows the livestock to reach the market size two to three weeks before time and also good for human consumption. There is the wow. sweet corn. Mm -hmm. There is the regular corn. There is corn you use to do the conflicts. You know, there's so much, there's high um, zinc content of corn. The same corn people think they know. And all these corns require specialization for the FMCGs that import corn. All of them are looking inward. So you need to specialize. You can't want to grow corn, want to do pig, want to do cassava, want to rear chicken. You must focus and narrow. That is something missing here. But many of these youths cannot go into farming. They can go into agribusiness. Mm -hmm. Many of them have the asset on their phones. They can become marketers. They can become brokers. They can make money leveraging on their phones. They can make money distributing. Farming is meant for a selected few. In every country, you would a uh, developed country, you will find less than 10% of the population yeah. Yeah. involved in agriculture. The remaining value chain yeah. is what many of them are into. So. Bottom line is we need to expose the youth to the value chain. Most importantly, because of the economy in Nigeria, we need to show them the money. Bottom line. Show them the money and they will align. Okay. Uh, well, uh, there are so many issues we could deal with, but let's keep you uh, hungry as it is uh, <laughs> and hope that we'll have another opportunity to talk with African farmer Mogaji. Uh, for now... Let's put a stop gap here because we have yet another guest before we round up uh, this show for today. We'd like to say thank you uh, to you for coming on the program.